All right, testing one, two, testing one, two. Testing, testing. All right, let's try that again. Testing, testing. The delay is real. guys welcome back to another stream we're gonna be playing quake 3 arena tonight sort of kind of not really the way it was meant to be played uh the way it was meant to be played was online or over a network with actual humans <laughs> but uh since we're on an old windows 98 machine that doesn't have an internet connection uh, we actually can't do that so what i'm going to do and this is actually something I've wanted to do for a long time on this channel, is go through the single player campaign. Uh, single player in quotes, really. It's basically just sort of like a training mode where you play uh, against bots and whatnot, and then you get to the end. And there is actually a small ending and credit sequence. Um, so we're going to show those off. Also, uh, show you guys the introduction to the game and whatnot. Um, and... Uh we will talk about uh, some basic mechanics and things like that, and uh, yeah. But like I said, we're actually running this on, a, on an old Windows 98 uh, build that I actually put together at the end of last year. It's running a uh, AMD Athlon XP processor. I believe it's a 3000 series, uh, maybe, maybe a little bit higher than that. I think it's 3000 series. Uh, we have an AMD Radeon, or an ATI, <laughs> Radeon uh, 9550 GPU in here, which I believe has got 256 megs of RAM. Uh, we're running this at 1024 by 768 in OpenGL, and uh, it runs pretty well on this machine uh, at this resolution. It actually runs great. I don't think it really ever slows down uh, much, if at all. Um, but yeah, it should be a fun stream. Uh, I predict this will probably take us uh, anywhere from two to four hours to get through. And uh, one thing that's kind of cool about Quake 3 is, I used to do this back in the day, is you can um, basically start a multiplayer only game with just yourself, no bots or anything. So generally you're supposed to include bots and whatnot, but you can uh, just jump in by yourself. Uh, this game came out in 1999 and these visuals were like stunning when the game came out. This is 1999 right here. Um, and what I used to do is uh, all these, uh, you know, uh, these uh, sort of reflection uh, texturing styles and like the, the lighting, I don't know what the terminology is for all this stuff, but the lighting and whatnot was just uh, absolutely phenomenal back then. And it actually, you know, when you play it at higher resolutions, it still holds up pretty well all things considered. Um, one thing that was also kind of big was these, uh, uh, you know, curved walkways and things like that. That was something that not many games had done. Uh, so Quake 3 Arena, it was uh, an excellent actual, you know, uh, arena first person shooter. It, it kind of took what Quake and Quake 2 did, but sort of refined the formula. And um, Along with uh, Unreal Tournament 2004, a couple years later, uh, I mean, these games basically perfected the formula, and, you know, this is kind of where the arena shooter peaked, uh, in, in my opinion. Um, but it also kind of, 
You know, it was also a big technical improvement over what had come prior, and it, it still looks uh, pretty sweet even today, so... Um, but yeah, so let me go ahead and uh, scroll through the chat here, uh, see who all is here. Hey, hey, DJ! And let me actually, I gotta move the chat over too so I can actually see it a little bit better. Okay, there we go. Good. Um, all right, let's see. Miku, JD Crow, Krusty, welcome back, man. Carlos, Andy. Andy, quit bitching about your PC Tempest 4000, dude. It's annoying. Seriously. Congrats on the PS4, though. Welcome to console land, finally. So when I, when I, you know, you can't make the excuse anymore about not having a console uh, to play some of these games. Uh, yeah, Raymond, uh, that's actually something I do want to talk about in this stream, is one of my earliest videos on YouTube was just a straight Quake 3 Arena gameplay video. And it's, I, for some reason, it hit in search results, and it's, uh... <laughs> It's, it's my most viewed video on the channel. I probably get a couple thousand views on it every week still. Uh, so that number keeps going up. I think it's like at 250 or 300,000 views right now. Um, which is... It was just pretty funny, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, Hernando, what's going on, man? Archie. And we got Sega Dreams. I don't believe I've seen you here before, unless you were someone else and you changed your name. But welcome to the stream. And Josh Crestline, Jose, Nist, Akella. What else we got? We had John Donnell Donnelly out there too. I don't know if he's still chatting. No, he is. There he is. Guns, liberal arts guy. Um, Anson Hughes. Oh yeah, guys. So uh, n good, great news today. Actually, it's kind of cool we're doing this. Uh, is that uh, the original Diablo was brought out to GOG? Uh, today So I actually grabbed that first thing in the morning when I got home from work and tried it out and uh, Yeah, it's a modern way to play Diablo. Well, it's a way to play Diablo on a modern system um, Without sacrificing, you know, its integrity uh, So if you play the original version at 640 by 480 uh, They actually got battle.net support working again, so you can actually play original Diablo on battle.net um, which is awesome. It's it's a really a, a blast from the past, man. I went and tried it out, and um, just sitting there in the Battle.net chat from 1996 is like, man, talk about a different time in the, in gaming history. Uh, but there is an updated version you can play that doesn't have Battle.net support. It only has local area network play, um, but it allows you to upscale it to like 1080p. Um, it, you can uh, activate anti-sotropic filtering and anti-aliasing and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's cool. It's it, the 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 updated version is not going to blow your mind or anything like that, but it is pretty sweet. So, um, hey, Solid Nate, welcome to the stream, dude. Um, but yeah, it's 10 bucks on GOG. Uh, I highly recommend it if you're a fan of the original Diablo. Even if you're not, uh, like if you haven't played the original Diablo, I still highly recommend it because it's a, it's a classic. It's an all-time classic. The game is 23 years old, but I think just about anyone that tries it will probably get hooked on it for a little bit of time, at least. It's really easy to get into. It's like, you start the game, you talk to one or two people, and then you're in your first dungeon in like a minute. Um, or two. It's it's great. So, um, but all right, let's go ahead and um, sort of do the old Patreon shoutouts first. So as usual, thanks to everyone that's supporting my show via places like Patreon. Um, I don't know, no new backers, but I don't think anyone has left us in the last couple weeks either. So that list is a couple weeks uh, up to date. And likewise with the recent live stream super chatters, uh, I actually have updated this slide just to give you guys a heads up that when you do become a channel member, you get those awesome sweet emotes on the left hand side there so there's actually a little monetization icon or dollar sign on the bottom of the chat that's how you do it i need to actually update the slide further so but thanks guys for that as well and uh i've actually scrunched over my obs so much that i can't even see what uh temp slide i'm on okay there we go 
Well, that gets that out of the way. So what we're going to do is we're going to exit here. We're going to go to Leave Arena. And uh, what we'll do is I'll show you the, uh, the first cinematic for the uh, introduction. And we'll just go ahead and let this play out. And then we'll go ahead and start a brand new game. We're going to do the second to hardest difficulty. Oh, that's fantastic news, Carlos. I'm glad uh, they were able to team up with Blizzard for that. Yeah. And, and, you know, one other thing that's great about the GOG version is that you don't have to have the original CD in the drive when you play it. I mean, obviously, that's, you know, that's a perk you get with GOG, but I'm so used to playing Diablo with the original disc. Like, even when we did our Diablo stream back in October, um, I was running on my Windows 95 or 98 machine here. Um, and I was just using the original CD. So it's like playing Diablo without the original CD is actually kind of weird to me because I've never done it before until now. So music kind of reminds you of the Matrix. Yeah, it was it's it was uh it was the same year. Matrix was '99, right? I believe it was. Two amazing things came out the exact same year, man. The late 90s, it was a good time to be a gamer, uh, especially if you were a PC gamer. Uh, if you were a PC gamer in 1999 and you had systems that could run this, man, it was it was mind-blowing stuff. So this, along with the Sega Dreamcast, kind of made up my, my last two years of high school. Uh, so yeah, there are uh, seven tiers that we have to go through. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, well, let's go through the the setup options first. You can go to player to configure your uh, your name and whatnot. Uh, you can put a handicap on. You can change the effect of your railgun shot. Uh, we'll go ahead and put it over to white or something like that. You can actually change your character model as well. There are a lot of different characters in the game. Um, I don't believe the characters are different from one another outside of sounds and looks. Uh, I'm pretty sure all the hitboxes are identical. I hope they're identical. Um, they might be. So, I'm pretty sure that's how Quake 3 works. But you've got uh, Doom in here. Uh, you've also got Crash, which is a female version of Doom. And uh, you've got some of the guys uh, kind of modeled after uh, the Marines in Quake 2. Um, you've got a bunch of other random characters, Bones, Anarchy. Uh, a bunch of these characters have actually made it back for Quake Champions, which is the uh, the most current version of, of Quake available at this point in time. We might not have to do a Quake Champions stream, but I'm not sure how entertaining it would be. Um, I've, uh, I actually sort of binged that a few months back. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know. We, we might not do a Quake Champion stream. But yeah, a lot of different characters you can choose from and whatnot. I always play, play a Ranger because, you know, he's from the original Quake. You can set your controls. Uh, you've got look, movements, um, shooting. Uh, for some reason, my, my mouse wheel doesn't like to work on this game half the time. So I've got a couple weapons bound to very specific keys. I mean, that's a good, that's good practice anyway in, in Quake 3 and any uh, competitive FPS. But uh, it is something. Uh, so yeah, you can change your crosshairs up here. There are a bunch of uh, different settings. I like just a straight dot like that. That way the, uh, the other things don't get in the way. Um, and that is pretty much that. So uh, there are a bunch of uh, console commands you can enter as well. That There is a console. Um, I don't remember any of the commands off the top of my head, but if, if we have time at the end of the stream, what I'll do is um, I'll go look up a list on like, you know, Wikipedia or something, and uh, we'll, we'll toy around with the options. One of the big things is the uh, field of view options. And so in, in high level competitive play back in the day, people would raise their FOV, um, making aiming uh, and whatnot uh, a little bit easier. Also, they would disable their textures and stuff like that. Um, now you can do a lot of that uh, with the textures and whatnot in the, the setup menu um, with the system settings here. But um, but you can also go even further uh, with the uh, uh, with the console. So, all right. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna go ahead and reset. 
This resets all the single player game variables. Do this only if you want to start over from the beginning. And yes, we want to start over from the beginning. So uh, we're going to start with Q3 DM0. Uh, so we just do a quick one-on-one -on -one match against Crash. And we're going to do Hardcore, which is the fourth difficulty mode. Nightmare is probably pushing our luck. And we'll be here all night if we try to try to do that. So I don't really want to do that. Um, so let's go ahead and hit Fight. And, uh, so the, you know, this is, this is really like the, the training, you know, section of the game. You just have to fight Crash, five kills, that's pretty much it. You start off in this room here, it really just shows off the, uh, like, the technical advancements that, uh, Quake 3 had made at the time. You've got, you know, various lighting effects, various reflective surfaces, um, you've got... A mirror, which is, this is one of the only points in the entire game where you actually see uh, a mirror like this. So when I first saw this in 99, I was just blown away. Um, but yeah, uh, these tele these are teleporters here. And what's actually really cool about them is you can actually see through them or see to the other side. So there's Crash. So I want to run through like this. Crash to win this arena. <laughs> And this is our plasma gun. Plasma gun's a fantastic weapon. You're gonna see me using it a lot. It's just a, a really, really good weapon in this game. Very powerful. Um, very, very powerful. Now, the, the early characters in this game really aren't that tough to deal with. Like, Crash isn't really moving around a lot. Now, if we were playing this on Nightmare, then she would be moving around a lot. Um, but she's not moving around a lot right now. So she's, she's pretty easy to deal with. Which is actually kind of good because by the end of this game, the AI gets uh, really, really, really annoying. Hey, Steve, welcome to the stream. This is all the rage along with Counter Strike at the local internet cafe. Hell yeah. All right, so now we fight against Ranger. And this is basically going to be the entire stream. We we're just we're just doing this for pretty much the entire playthrough. So we got ourselves the rocket launcher. And the best thing to do with the rocket launcher is to try to just destroy the enemy with splash damage. So you want to kind of aim the rockets near their feet, try to predict where they're going, try to have the rockets get as close to them as as humanly possible. Now there is red armor over here on this map. So armor basically reduces the amount of uh, damage you take per hit, and the higher the armor, the better. And the red armor gives you the most amount of armor. Now I have, uh, when you play this game in the beginning, it defaults to doing um, auto switch weapons, which can be a little cumbersome. So like if I had run into that plasma gun, uh, it would have switched it automatically, but I disabled that option. That way, when I run into a weapon and I'm shooting someone, it doesn't automatically switch to that weapon. That floor texture was always really cool, too. This game did something, I I don't remember what it was called, but it was something like multi-textures. Where, like, you could layer textures on top of each other. And so it actually looks like there are three textures there. There's the actual floor texture, and then there's the animated texture underneath it. And then there's the other animated texture, which is like the fire underneath that. Uh, that was something that was simplified big time in home ports of this game. So even if you had like the Dreamcast or PS2 version of the game, actually I'm not sure about the PS2 version. We're gonna we're gonna stream that sometime. Um, those textures were heavily simplified, so you didn't have quite the same wow factor in those. Uh, still good versions of the game. I, I actually lived on Dreamcast Quake 3 for quite some time because my computer in '99 couldn't handle Quake 3 appropriately. It wasn't until uh, late to, uh, early, early to mid 2001 that I had a PC that could handle Quake 3 really well. There we go. This game is not on PS4, no. It's actually interesting you bring that up though, because this was brought out as, uh, Quake Online Live Arcade? I don't remember the exact name, but there was a version of it on, uh, um, on Xbox 360, probably PS3. Um, probably around the same time they did Quake Live on PC. 
Quake Live on PC was a... I want to say... I'm trying to remember when the beta started. I think the beta started in 2008. I was a part of the closed beta on that one. And, um... It's, um... You know, it was sort of an updated version of Quake 3 built for web browsers. You would download it as a web browser plugin. Uh, at the time, it was a web browser plugin. And, uh... Since it's been made into its own standalone release that you can get on Steam, uh, I don't think anyone really plays it anymore, unfortunately. Uh, but that was another updated version of Quake 3. It had a bunch of tweaks to it, some level design changes, uh, some sound changes. The way you would uh, connect to servers online was was different and whatnot. Um, yeah, I would say it's kind of more of a refined version of Quake 3, but there are definitely things I do still prefer about the original Quake 3 release. I definitely prefer some of the item placement in the original Quake 3. Some of the sounds and things like that. Yeah, the 360 version of Quake 3 might have been based on Quake Live, actually, come to think of it. But, Quake Live, Quake 3, it's still, you know, still a variation on the same thing, so. Quake 3 is not a single player game, and not in the traditional sense, like we are playing single player right here, but we're just playing against bots. It's just, it, all it does is it simulates the online aspect. It's meant to be played online. And so when you play single player, it just simulates the online aspect. And we just got the boost power up, which lets you fire a lot faster. So Quake 3, along with Unreal Tournament, were games that were geared strictly towards actual multiplayer. They were, they were, they were multiplayer games first and foremost. The, uh, the, uh, the local, uh, local area, not local area play, the... The single player play, again, it's just simulating the online aspect. Now, you do have different tiers you can go through. You know, you want to try to beat the bots and whatnot, uh, and it can be extremely challenging, but it's not what I would call a traditional single player campaign. So, we've got two frags left. So if you're new to arena shooters, uh, it's all about learning where the items are, learning where the pickups are. Like I know the red armor is right here, and I actually I just picked up the red armor, which is great. Actually, no, I think he picked it up. I don't think I picked it up. I think he did. Uh, there are some shortcuts to get around. Uh, one of the shortcuts is by jumping up right here. Doesn't look like you can get up, but you can. Knowing where your health pickups are, like there's this one big health pickup right there. And we just won. Perfect. Did I ever go to QuakeCon? I did not, no. QuakeCon um, was always kind of far away for me. Mix. And being in Texas and all. Um, never had the money or anything like that. Um, but I kind of wish I did go back in the day. All right. So this map has red armor up past that bridge. This is where the rocket launcher spawns. Now, when you're playing against the AI, what I find is that they have a tendency of sort of moving towards like a particular, um, uh, just a particular point in the map. And the particular point on this one is kind of where this rocket launcher is. They like to hang out by that area for some reason. And so when you figure out where those parts are on each map, um, you know, some of these maps become a little bit easier to deal with. You are tied for the lead. Shotgun is really best when you're up close uh, to your opponents. It's not that great when you're far away, but sometimes it's all you got. It's a very good weapon up close, though. It does a lot of damage. And not a great start so far. We're actually one frag behind. So frags are kills if you've never played these games before. 
And you can actually see your score at the bottom right hand portion of the screen. Uh, the little box in red is, is my score. And then the one uh, next to that is the, the top score so far. So this machine gun here is your base stock weapon, but it's extremely weak. So what I generally like to do when I play this uh, in single player is to save the machine gun for when I have things like quad damage. Quad damage is a power up that'll do four times the damage. And unfortunately there's no quad damage on this level. And Orb is kicking our asses right now. What kind of mouse am I using? It's a Logitech mouse. I don't know the exact model, but it's one from uh, about 2000 or so. And it's USB. It's really not looking good on this one, actually. We're, we're not doing well at all, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm actually still down at 8 kills. There's no way I'm gonna get this back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna restart the arena. Yeah, like, Orb there was just getting way too many kills, way too fast. And he was he was definitely gonna get two kills before I would get seven or whatever whatever I needed. So that is one thing you can do when you're playing doing the single player in this game. If bots get too far of a head start, I'll just quit and I'll just restart and I'll just do it over again. There's no penalty. The only penalty well, there's no real penalty. The the only downside is that oh you gotta start from the, the beginning again on that map. Not a big deal. So you guys are gonna be, you're gonna see me doing that a lot uh, on the later parts of the playthrough, as the AI gets harder and they they get head starts a lot faster. But so far we're doing all right. Uh, the gauntlet here. This is a melee uh, close combat weapon. It's not really that great, but it is actually really funny to kill enemies with it because it's hard to kill enemies with it. Interestingly, they actually made the gauntlet a little bit better in, in Quake Live. I believe it's Quake Live. Whereas in this one, when you hit enemies with the gauntlet, uh, there's a big delay. Health should be right there. Now you can also do what's uh, called bunny hopping in this game, where when you, when you jump at just the right time, you actually build momentum. This was something a lot of earlier uh, first-person shooters did. Does anyone know if uh, modern FPS games still do uh, allow bunny hopping? Or if it's something that was mo mostly in older ones? Alright, health is back. Oh. He's doing their orb. Stop it. It's okay. We got the armor. Alright. Three more kills to go. So these guys down here, these are armor shards. They give you five bits of armor apiece. So now we're up to 90 armor. Again, the, the more armor you have, the better. Where are you guys?
And there's also a grenade launcher up here. I'm not a huge fan of the grenade launcher in this game, but it is something. I generally prefer uh, Quake 1's grenade launcher. But really, you're best off using the rockets if you can. It's uh, so much more of a flexible weapon. Alright, see ya, Andy. Best of luck with your PS4. Enjoy it. <laughs> Chris Bennett remembers playing this in high school. Hell yeah. Oh, man. Alright, so on this map, this is where the power-ups appear. So every time a power-up spawns, uh, it makes a pretty distinct sound. So you want to listen out for that. Power-ups are also on a timer. You know, in competitive play back in the day, you would, you would, you would look at the timer. And great, he's gonna get the quad damage. Oh! Lucky. He was pretty much close. He was, he was close to death. So, what I like to do in when I'm playing against the bots is I definitely like to uh, use the machine gun with the quad damage. Because it actually does fast damage very quickly. So now one of the things in this game too is you don't really have invincibility frames or anything like that when you spawn in. Ooh, lucky. Oh, he just got quad damage. What I like about this map is that it's really small. And because it's small, it's a lot easier to predict where your opponent's going. So if you see him going into a hallway, you know he's gonna pop out at, at one of two sides, you know? So it's it's fun to try to predict where he's where he's gonna go. <laughs> well, I uh, all right. So Quake, the Quake One and Quake Three, these are uh, multiplayer games I basically lived on for a very long time back in the day. Now I don't play uh, competitive shooters much anymore, uh, just because my time is is usually spent elsewhere. Um, but it is uh, a huge part of my life at one point in time. It was a huge part of my life at one point in time. Um, so as I practice, some of those old skills come back, but I, I'd say I'm not anywhere near as good as I was back then. Um, probably back in the late 90s, early 2000s. You have taken the lead. And it's actually fun, it's, it's kind of interesting going back and playing this on, on an actual old machine, because the mouse sensitivity is so much less smooth than it is nowadays. And that is definitely something that can, uh, that can throw you off big time. So there's quad damage. Unfortunately, we're not off to a good start here. The trick on this map is getting the quad damage and just wrecking people with it. And getting a weapon that doesn't actually suck. Yeah. 
Orb is back again. Orb always seemed like a pain to, to, to fight. And that, that really sucked. Oh, they're not getting the quad damage. And that sucks again. Jesus Christ, man. There's nothing worse than getting quad damage and then dying instantly. I was gonna say, dude, how much health do you have? Orb is like a tank. Alright, really sh I should be getting out of here and try to get some health. And trying to get some armor of some kind. Yeah, and you really don't want to be running around the map with just like, uh... Just like the super shotgun, if you can avoid it. You really want to try to get yourself at least a plasma gun or a rocket launcher. And so one of my issues with this map right now is I'm doing just that. I keep running around with a machine gun. I'm missing out on my quad damage opportunities. Hey, John Evan. Do I at least get the super shotgun? All right, we're gonna have to restart. We're, there's no way we're gonna we're gonna do this. We're he's got four more to go. I've got 14 more to go. Yeah, again, I, I'm pretty sure in this game the hitboxes are, are the same for all characters. You have lost or denied. And so, it's just like, the it's the shape of Orb that just gives the illusion of him being harder to hit. When he's actually not harder to hit, his hitbox should be the exact same as everyone else's. So in competitive play, what they do on, you know, competition servers is there's a, some kind of plugin or server plugin or something like that that um, will make every every character model look identical. And I think it takes away a lot, you know, from the character of the game, unfortunately. But it makes sense from a competition standpoint. You want everything to be as even as possible. And you you want you want the advantages on a map to be people controlling certain areas of the map skillfully. You don't want someone to have an upper hand just because their hitbox is smaller. That's that's not good balance. Now you can see how quickly things can turn around for you when you've got quad damage. See, I mean, just look at that. It's crazy. It's craziness. There we go. Uh, Dreamcast Quake 3 was the only one with keyboard mouse support. Yes, yes it was. Oh, 
Wow, that's a, actually a really good start. A little bit of a shortcut there. You can jump up on that that little uh, rubble. Oops! Oh my god, I fell off too early. We wouldn't have died there. There was red armor up top. And I, I fell off way too early. That was really dumb of me to do. You can also fall down on through the sides here. You have lost the lead. It's a really good start, but you know, we weren't able to follow through, so we're already we're already down. Okay, there we go. Now there's a thing in this game called rocket jumping. So you uh aim down at the ground, shoot a rocket, and jump at the same time, you'll Propel yourself up into the air. It's a really fun skill. Now, generally, you only want to really rocket jump to get uh, out of harm's way or to get, say, armor that's up top. Go ahead and get ourselves some armor. Let's get back up top here. Jump up this way. Come over here. Red armor should. Yep, there's red armor. You want the armor, especially as things get more and more chaotic. And the AI is just having a grand old time running right into my rockets. I'm okay with that. I'm not complaining. Now, if you blow yourself up, uh, you do lose a kill. So you don't really want to. You don't really want to kill yourself if you can avoid it. But sometimes it's hard to avoid. I do want that armor, but I also don't want to die again. Ah. We're gonna have to take the scenic route. If I had more health, I would just rocket jump up, but I can't. You can also rocket jump. Like that. One frag left. All right, got it. John Evan is playing F Zero. Hell yeah! Great, great series. All right, this is uh everyone's favorite map, the campgrounds, and I don't mean that facetiously. It really, is a fantastic map. Uh, this map has become a staple uh, over the years. Both in Quake Live and Quake Champions. You have taken the lead. You are tied for the lead. All right, so I apparently killed myself. If you look in the top left-hand portion of the screen, the text is very small, but you'll notice that uh, it tells you how you died or how you killed other enemies. Good use of quad damage. Let's go ahead and get this. So I, this is uh, the teleporter, and I have it bound to the control key. So there are a couple of single-use items that you can get in this game. The teleporter is actually really good because if you're about to die, you can you can use it and then teleport elsewhere to the map. Where you teleport to, I believe, is random. But chances are you'll get lucky and it'll, it'll put you out of harm's way. And then maybe you could recoup, get your health back, things like that. Three frags 
And there we go. <laughs> you sold your cube, now you regret it. Yeah, fortunately, game cubes themselves aren't very expensive. Yeah, we're going through the single player game, so it's it's all bots. Hunter. So this is where we get ourselves the lightning gun. Which, honestly, they actually tweaked, I think, for the better in, uh, in Quake Live. But it is cool seeing it in this, uh, in the original version of Quake 3. You are tied for the lead. So the rockets, uh, are down here. Up top, you get some armor. There are armor shards on both sides here. You can actually jump across this gap if you time it just right. You can also jump on these sides here, like that. All right, where is she? You have taken the lead. Let's go ahead and get this health. Yeah, and one of the things about the, the lightning gun in this game is that like you'll be doing damage to the enemy, but it won't actually make a sound constantly, so you don't know if you're constantly doing damage. Um, whereas in Quake Live, like it's the the amount of you'll notice let me go back a step. You'll notice that when you hit enemies in this game, it makes a, a high pitched sound. When Quake Live, it makes like a thousand of those when you're using the lightning gun on an enemy. And this, it just it just sounds it off occasionally. And so you're not really sure if you're if you're constantly doing damage or not, even when it's right on the enemy constantly. I might as well just stay down here and just see what happens, you know, it seems to be working out pretty well. Armor's constantly appearing here. The lightning gun's doing good damage to her. And there she goes. That's an endless, well, not really an endless pit, but if you fall down into it, you die. There is a floor. Actually, that one might be actual, actually endless. There are endless pits in this game. But no matter what kind of pit you fall into, you die. If it's uh, if it's uh, an instant death pit. All right, I'm making good progress actually. <laughs> it's like being in one of those towns built for old people with Alzheimer's. Oh, jeez, man. <laughs> Damia Rack Grunt Slash Alright, so this is where we get the railgun. We're probably not going to use a lot of it because I find that uh, aiming with it is tough. If you go behind this teleporter, you'll get yourself some mega health, though. And there's the plasma gun. So you can come up here and grab the rocket launcher and the teleporter. If you hit this switch, you open up uh, the floor down here, and then that reveals the red armor. Jeez, man. Getting wrecked. And the quad damage is out here. Mega health has come back, okay. Alright, 
Alright, well that got us back up a little bit. Yeah, that dude's got nine frags already, and I've only got five. Hey, Joseph, welcome back. Okay, that was good. That caught me up a little bit. Quad damage is probably going to spawn in again in just a few moments. So I kind of want to get back out this way. Anytime quad damage. This is reliving 20 years ago. <laughs> oh, I think I just killed two enemies at once. Two enemies with one rail shot. Oh, he killed me with one shotgun shot. That's always pretty annoying. Because I never seem to be able to do that. Oh, come on. Alright, that's it. Oof. It always gets a little tense because the AI can catch up really, really quick. Alright, this one could be fun too, if you can, if you can get, uh, blah, I can't talk right now. If you can get yourself the quad damage, it's, you can just mow through the enemies like crazy here. Because they all like to huddle into one very specific room. You have lost the lead. Let's go ahead and get that armor. We'll get these two. You are tied for the lead. You have taken the lead. And, oh, she's gonna get it. Oh, no. I got it. Yeah, so it's this room here everyone has a tendency of huddling into. And so what we're gonna do is just kind of chill out in here if we can. Good start. Now there's invisibility. I don't think invisibility actually does a whole lot when you're playing against the AI. I could be wrong, but... They can see you just fine, as bots, I'm pretty sure. Oh, 
Ooh, nice. So I switched right over to my shotgun as he was flying through the air and got him, shot him in the air. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> that was actually really awesome. Oh, and it's invisibility again. Where's the quad damage? It's supposed to be quad damage. What's my opinion on camping? Um, I mean, camping can be kind of annoying, but I mean, ultimately, it's it's your job as a player to stop people from camping. Camping is usually the kind of strategy that uh, lesser players do. I mean, especially in Quake 3. In Quake 3, the maps are pretty well balanced. I mean, good weapons are spread all over the map. So it's hard to camp for one, like, specific... One specifically awesome weapon or power-up or something like that. It just doesn't really work that well in this game. Now, there are, you know, a couple of uh, minor exceptions. Like later on when the BFG starts becoming a part of uh, the gameplay. You have taken the lead. Now what's kind of funny about the AI in this game is they tried to simulate like trash talking and stuff like that. Uh, and so the AI will taunt you. But just like real players, you can see when the AI is doing that. Because a little text box will appear over the top of the tops of their heads. And when that happens, the AI just sits there because their hands are off the controls, like, you know, a human's would be. Because back in this day, we didn't really have team speak and stuff like that. It was, like, we didn't have voice chat, I should say. It was, uh, you know, we would, we would... We would bind sayings to keys on the keyboard, or we would just stop and type manually. And so the AI is is sort of simulating that. So if I see a chat box over an AI's head and it's just standing there, oh, I kill it. I don't I don't stop. <laughs> Especially with how tough the AI gets near the end of the game. I basically take everything I can get. I don't know if I can make that. I can. Okay. Good shots. Yeah, I mean, camping is one of those things that is going to be a lot more annoying in some games over others. But I think in Quake 3, it wasn't nearly as bad. In Quake 1, it could definitely be worse. But dealing with camping is also a part of just, you know, the general game skill that a, that a player will have to have. You'll need to know how to counter that. Ooh, I didn't even see him coming over. So weapons in this uh, constantly respawn. So if you know where the rocket launcher is, and if you don't see it there, just sit there. It'll spawn in, in a couple of seconds. It's one of the other nice things, uh, one of the more streamlined things about Quake 3. Now, when I was playing this on Twitch uh, earlier this week, 
Uh, we also played Unreal Tournament afterwards, and I found that Unreal Tournament was a lot less streamlined in that regard. So when you pick up weapons in that game, it takes a while for them to spawn back. Uh, which makes the game, I think, a little less balanced. So when you spawn in Quake 3, you've got to figure out where you are and figure out where the closest weapon is and then go get it. In Unreal Tournament, you could be screwed running around with uh, just the Enforcer, your basic pistol, for ages until you find something decent. Which is kind of annoying, but in Quake 3, you don't really ever run into that. Alright, this is our, uh, our one-on-one -on -one match. So every tier has a one-on-one -on -one match. And this one could be pretty annoying, actually. So what I'm gonna do is just sort of sit over in this area, because what he does is he gets the railgun, and he is very accurate with it. And so if I end up on the other side like I am right here, I'm just gonna sort of... I'm not gonna go on that bridge. Where is he? There he is. Ooh, he thought it was death. Alright, so I'm gonna take advantage of that and run over here. Let's come back here. Alright, so this is the battle suit. Um, I'm a little confused on what it actually does in this one. I know in Quake Live, it seems to really minimize the amount of damage that you take, particularly like rocket damage and whatnot. But in this, it doesn't seem to have as much of an effect. So if anyone out there knows about it, feel free to clarify. But it, I go ahead and try to get it anyway, if I can. Like there he is with his railgun. See, I want to know where he is first, because when he gets the railgun, as long as you're out in the open, he is going to hit you. Like, look at that! Look at that, man. Alright, I'm getting out of here. So using the railgun up close is one of the toughest things to do. And he does it like it's nothing, and that's one of the issues with the AI in, uh, in not just Quake 3, but really any FPS. Any arena shooter in particular. Is they just lock onto you 100% of the time. Now you've got to be really careful on that bridge because when he hits you with the railgun, he can knock you off the bridge in one shot. So you might not die from the shot, instantly, but you will get knocked off the bridge and still die. Oh! Oh, that was close. <laughs> Jumped a little too far in one direction. Thought I was going to go off the edge. Okay, we got it. First try. Thank you. Hey, Chanty. Unreal Tournament for PS3? Yeah, that was Unreal Tournament 3. I played a lot of Unreal Tournament 3. That was the last uh, arena shooter that I, I sunk significant time into. Alright, so these maps I'm not a huge fan of, to be honest with you. Um, but we have to go through them anyway. Alright, 
Okay, plasma guns up here. So one of the power-ups that you can get is down on this floor, on the bottom here. And it'll spawn right here. Look at that texture, man. It's so cool. You have lost the lead. So this portal looking thing here, it actually constantly refills health and ammunition, not ammunition, but health and armor. I just spawned right on top of armor. I didn't know that was uh, the spawn point. Oops, we're dead. Uh, don't fall into lava, guys. It's bad. Lava is bad. Alright, let's see if that power-up appeared here. Yep, invisibility. I'm, again, I'm not a huge fan of invisibility. I'd rather have quad damage or something like that. But, whatever. Yeah, I also found, like, I had a hell of a time winning on this map, uh, when I was playing this earlier this week. So let's go ahead and restart. I'm too far down. Some of these guys are, are taking way too long to die, too. Alright, see ya, Archie. Take care. Alright, uh, let's go down this way. Okay, regeneration's really good, actually. Aside from quad damage, this is the, uh, the best power-up. Your health constantly, uh, recharges. Come on. Yeah, the other thing about this map is just like it's lots of like really tiny corridors. It's very maze-like. So there's not a lot of room for movement on this one, which is pretty annoying. One silly- well, there's only lava at two very specific, you know, like, the lava's really easy to avoid, Carlos, so I don't really see that as a major complaint. Like, it's there, but, I mean, if you think the lava here is bad, you should see other maps. <laughs> Like, look, lava! Oh no, I avoided it! Oh jeez, I didn't fall in! Oh... It's so hard. Oh, man. Invisibility? You are tied for the lead. You have 
I mean, it looks like the AI might be slightly nerfed when you've got the uh, invisibility, so that's good. Like, they're not attacking me as much when uh, when I've got it. No, oh, I just have to give Carlos a hard time because he always takes like one of the most absolutely like minor insignificant things and makes a big deal about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, Carlos. Oh no, the lava that's like at three parts of the map. Yeah, Carlos, I don't even know if you've seen this game before, uh, but trust me, uh, the pits get way more annoying uh, later on in the game. Wait until we get to the space stages. You think the lava's bad. Wait until we get to the space stages. For those of you guys that have never seen this before, uh, you'll... We, we should have a pretty good time by the time we get to those levels. <laughs> Be able to show off some of uh, the more irritating maps in the game. Alright, I think invisibility should be back. <laughs> he goes, no, it's okay, I'm good. <laughs> oh, come on, man. No! I actually fell into the lava. See, that was my fault, though. Ooh, regen, I'll take that. I have to not die in the process, though, because I don't want to give it to the AI. Which is exactly what will happen when you die, because your power-up drops when you get killed. Oh, come on. Yeah, it's actually getting close now. Everyone wants that sweet, sweet health. Oh, so close. I got lucky because I think the AI actually fell in the lava because their kills went down by one or two. Yeah, the graphics in this game were great, man. I mean, obviously they're they're a wee bit dated, but you know, for a 1999 game, it, it looks uh, pretty awesome still. The floating station with the jump pads, yeah. There, there are, uh, we've got a couple of those in this. Alright, so this is the med kit. It gives you all your health back. It's a, uh, single-use item. And so what I want to do here is sort, sort of huddle in this main area. This main hallway here is where everyone likes to go. You can also jump in here, and there's a, uh, a secret. I'm guessing it's a take on the old dope fish. Your 
tied for the lead. Alright, so let's go back this way. You have lost the lead. Ignore that guy. Ooh, lucky shot. I don't know if they've gotten the quad damage yet. But quad damage does appear in this map. You have taken the lead. And generally it's over here. Yeah, someone's already got it. And when you jump on this, I forgot. I think it might only be when you actually pick up the power up. You, you jump on this platform, the get the lead. power up, and uh, there are these you grenade launchers the in the walls that uh, that fire at you. You are tied for the lead. You have lost the lead. You are tied for the lead. You have lost. You are tied for the lead. Tied for the lead. You have taken the lead. Lucky shooting. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have killed him unless, uh, you know, if it wasn't for him blowing himself up. So one strategy too is to get their health down. If you hit them like once or twice with rockets, you can generally switch over to your machine gun uh, and finish them off long range. Looks like we got a boost. Oh yeah, there's a Mega Sphere up here, or Mega Health, not Mega Sphere. Mega Sphere is in Doom. <laughs> I ran right into that grenade. All right, we got it. You, do you think they'll hide the dope fish in Eternal? Uh, I have no idea. Did they do it in 2016? I don't remember if they they put one in there. They might have. Slash. I've never gotten all the secrets in Dune 2016, so I have no idea. Alright, so what I'm going to do is sort of cheese this map. We're going to fall down into this water here. And in this middle exit here, you can get yourself the BFG. Now, it's not like the old classic BFG, but it is extremely powerful. Uh, it does, Carlos. Uh, and that was something that was added uh, in... Uh, so, Quake 3 had an expansion called, um, Team Arena, and it added a few different things. I believe some of those made it into the PS2 version of, uh, Quake 3. So the BFG here, think of it as, like, a rapid-fire rocket launcher. It's extremely powerful. I 
said I was gonna cheese the map, but I also kind of want this clock damage for obvious reasons. Back down here. Hey, Kitsu, how's it going, man? Haven't seen you much lately. BFG is just so good in this game. And it's just like any other weapon in the game, it just constantly spawns. That was garbage, man. Two guys spawn like right next to me. Where are we at? I think we're on... Are we on Tier 4? Might be on Tier 4. Or are we on Tier 5? I don't remember. We're somewhere in the game. There's seven tiers total. The last tier, I believe, is just the final boss, and that's it. So... Biker looked like he was getting stuck. D and D has consumed your time lately. Nice. Is it better when you play with others? Oh, absolutely, Raymond, yeah. No, it's absolutely better, especially with friends. Alright, so this is our boss. Our one-on-one -on -one boss level. Red armor is up top there in the middle, like that.
Oof. Hit me with one rail shot. There's one boss per tier, John. John Evan. So seven. You have lost the lead. Seven tiers in the game. I personally wouldn't really call them bosses, but I mean that's it's it's kinda how they're presented. It's always a one-on-one -on -one match. And the AI is always seemingly a little bit more difficult. How did I kill myself in one hit? I had full health. That made no sense. I shouldn't have killed myself instantly like that. I was trying to rocket jump up to the armor. So, one good technique in in any of these older Quake games, really any FPS like this that's an arena shooter, it's good to, to keep the higher ground if you can. It's a lot easier to hit enemies down below with rockets than it is to hit enemies higher up. Also gives you more options for cover, typically. Like that. You have taken the lead. I didn't see that. Alright, let's get some health. Oh, not like that. Oh, crap. Great, he's gonna get the health. A lot of times when they go up a, uh, a boost pad like that, you can shoot the side of the boost platform, like, shoot a rocket like here as they're going up, and it'll usually hit them and do good damage, but the thing is when you boost up, you don't have to go all the way, you don't have to go straight forward, like I just boosted backwards like this, you see? So it's something to keep in mind when you are boosting in this game. Crap. I only had one hit point, so there was no no way I was gonna survive anything. Ranger needs rockets badly. There we go. Oh, I missed it. How do you miss that? Refresh. 
lucky. So now, something else, if you're playing against humans, you can actually uh, hold down the walk function. And it'll basically make you tiptoe through the map so enemies can't hear you. So when you're playing competitive shooters like this, sound is a huge, huge part of it. Because you can hear your opponent's footsteps. You can hear all the items that they pick up. So if I hear someone walking around and I hear them pick up four armor shards back to back, I know exactly where they are, and then I can try to predict where they're going from there. Hopefully I predicted which direction they were going in correctly. And that's where some of the deeper strategy comes from in these games. And you can sort of throw your opponent off by walking. Walking instead of running. Because they won't be able to hear your footsteps. And they won't know that you're nearby. Hey, office. Alright, back to trying to get quad damage. Quad damage appears right here. You have lost the lead. You are tied for the lead. There's also mega health right down here. You have lost the lead. You are tied for the lead. All right, we want to get back up top though for that uh, quad damage. Crap! Someone already got it. Where are they? I think they're down below here. Yeah, I wanted that quad damage. You have lost the lead. Dude, obviously, the coolest thing about the grenade launcher is being able to ricochet shots off walls at an angle. Which can be pretty handy, you know, if you're trying to shoot enemies in another room, but you don't want to go into the other room. You can just bounce grenades off the walls. It's great. But whether you actually hit something is just kind of based on luck by that point. Mega health. If you see the mega health, get it. You can also rocket jump up there too. Take advantage of the AI typing. There's also a med kit up there too, so I should probably get that.
There it is. Lightning gun is fantastic. It's doubled with clog damage. Just look at that. Eats their enemies like butter. Oh crap. Crap. I kept missing. Got it. <laughs> it is Kitsu. <laughs> Hit scan and quad damage is stress relief. <laughs> yeah, that's why a lot of times I uh, go to my machine gun when I've got quad damage. Pfizer. All right, so there's a BFG on this level too. There's also red armor up here. And the BFG should be down there. Uh, but I'm not gonna go there yet. I'm gonna stay up top. Oh! Uh, office? Yes, we actually talked about it at the very beginning of the stream. And, uh, I did buy it. When I heard about it earlier today, I was like, instant buy. I don't care how much money I have. <laughs> yeah, so I bought it right away. Oh, come on. We're not doing so hot here. We might have to restart. Ooh, I almost fell down there. Well, the high res support right now is, uh, it's not really high res in the traditional sense. Like, the graphics haven't been tweaked. It looks like they're doing simple upscaling. But basically, it'll look correct on a modern monitor. As opposed to being, like, fully stretched at 640 by 480. The biggest takeaway is that Battle.net is functioning. 
so you can play it online just like you could, you know, 23 years ago. <laughs> the greatest game ever made, only second to StarCraft. I can agree with that. Or at least... One of the greatest arena shooters ever made. When we get into greatest game ever made territory, I have to do a, a lot of... A lot of heavy thinking. But both this and StarCraft are phenomenal. And Unreal Tournament. Can't forget Unreal Tournament. The issue is your laptop not liking low resolutions. That doesn't make any sense to me. Oh crap, I forgot about that pit. Yeah, no, StarCraft is great, guys. Uh, I don't play real-time strategy games, but I played the living hell out of StarCraft. So... That should tell you something right there. Hey, Mike. damage just appeared. You are tied for the lead. Oh! Oh, so close. I thought we were going to lose. Okay, so it's not, um... Some LCDs have issues with 640 by 480 and or 256 colors. Yeah, see, that's weird to me. I always thought that was more like a Windows thing. More like a Windows or an API thing. Not so much an LCD thing. But maybe it is just some LCD panels don't like those lower resolutions. Yeah, I was in high school when it came out too, and that's where I did most of my, my playing back in the day. Razor. Kill. But Kitsu, if you get the... Uh if you get Diablo and GOG, try the original version and let me know if it still does that for you. Because the original version lets you play at the original resolution. You have lost the lead. You are tied for the lead. But that doesn't make any sense, though. It's not an LCD issue if it's changing graphics uh, hardware. Like that has that should have nothing to do with your screen. It sounds like there's some sort of your your 
the GPUs in your your laptop are freaking weird. Installing now. Oh yeah, I mean Diablo 2 on there would be great. Um, they used to sell Diablo 2 on um, on their website, Blizzard, but I'm not sure if they still do that. It used to be like ten bucks or something. Yeah, my one of my goals is to get a CRT. Uh, just a good VGA or DVI. Well, VGA monitor. Did they make DVI CRTs? I don't know. I want a I want a PC VGA monitor. Um, preferably like a 17 or a 19 inch. That way I can permanently have one of these old computers hooked up at all times. And I can be playing these games at the uh, higher refresh rates. 70, 75 hertz and, and whatnot. Come on guys, where are you? Alright, there's one. By the way, that little that little hallway with those inverted crosses, that's where the quad damage appears. So speaking of which, let me run up here. Did someone pick it up already? Oh no, that was the uh That was the battle suit sound. What should you bid for for Quake 3 Arena? Uh, a couple dollars. <laughs> if it doesn't have any bids on it, just bid as, as low as possible. What version are you talking about, Miku? The PC version out of the box might not run on a modern operating system. Or, like, it might run on Windows 7, but it... it probably won't run on uh, Windows 10. Or if it does, it might have issues. Great, someone's got the quad. We're gonna go ahead and just restart. They're way too far ahead. It's like I'm not running into anybody on this map. That's pretty bad. You have lost the lead. Uh, it's most likely not the steel box. Oh, it is the steel box? What? Dreamcast, yeah, it's not the steel box. Yeah, so the steel box PC version was the limited edition version of the game. I used to have that back in the day when I was... Well, when I was a huge Quake 3 fan. I want to get another steel box copy. Currently, I just have a regular big box copy. Which is not the steel box. So these days, they do steel books. Back then, they did steel boxes. Actual big boxes.
Yeah, the only thing about the Dreamcast version of Quake 3 is, for one, the lower frame rate, but two, uh, it's quite difficult to play with the standard controller. It's doable, but it takes a lot of practice. Uh, so for the Dreamcast one, I recommend getting a keyboard and mouse and playing that way. It does support the Dreamcast keyboard and mouse. We're gonna restart again. I'm doing absolutely horribly here. Oh, he used the teleporter. I hate it when they do that. Yeah, so if you get close to a power-up and you fail to pick it up because someone else takes it right from underneath you, it says, DENIED. So we finally got- I think it was the first time we got the DENIED call-out all playthrough. Alright, see ya Josh. Take care, man. Thanks for thanks for hanging out. Sleep well. Yeah, so I heard someone spawn in, but I didn't see them, so I figured they were behind me, so I went ahead and just turned around. Sure enough. Again, that's where listening to the audio is key. Very, very important. I was lucky. Don't touch those crosses, by the way. I'm pretty sure they kill you instantly. guys keep getting their power-ups too, which isn't helping me. Oh, I got sniped from a douche behind me. Gotta do it over again. Man. Strike. Kill. Razor. Humiliation. 
Humiliation. You are tied for humiliation. That super shotgun. Where the hell did they go? It's like I go behind the boost pad and then I come back out and they're all gone. Hit me mid air. Well, we're still ahead at least. Definitely doing a lot better this time. Alright. Oh, wait. That's it. Excellent. Yeah, so there, you actually don't need the LAN adapter um, anymore on the Dreamcast. You can use the dial-up modem built in, and you can run it into, I believe, a Raspberry Pi. And there's, there's a whole setup you can do where you run the Dreamcast into the Pi and then the Pi handles your Ethernet connection. Uh, so you basically get a high-speed connection with just using the stock, um, you know, built-in modem connection on the Dreamcast. Or does it even use the modem or does it just connect with this? No, I think it's the modem. I don't know. There, there are tutorials online. You get the Dreamcast set up for online play without buying the, uh, the broadband adapter. The broadband adapters are not cheap. I mean, they they're they're really not, unfortunately. 
So I'm gonna try something on this fight. Uh, this guy is kind of a pain to deal with because you can barely see ahead of you. And so what this guy has a tendency of doing though is if you camp up here, he has a tendency of trying to rocket jump up to you. And this is where the quad damage spawns, by the way. Yep. There he goes. That's one. Oh, that was BS. Freaking BS, dude. Direct rocket hit. You have lost the lead. How did you not die? Let's come back up this way. Try it again. You have lost the lead. It's better that I, if I'm gonna do this, it's better that I had the plasma gun, which is back here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> the game does cheat. <laughs> That's why this isn't the best kind of single player that you could you could get. It's it gets frustrating, you know. You have lost the lead. And so what? One thing I'm also doing wrong here is I'm I'm going out into the open when I don't need to. What I need to do is just come up here, sit in the corner, and then he'll basically rocket jump up. Like an idiot, I keep, like, just poking out. I can even duck. See, now he can't really hit me. And every time he does a rocket jump, he's doing damage to himself. Ah! Oh, <laughs> what the hell, dude? Oh, did the quad damage disappear completely? I think it did. I thought it would just stay out wherever it was dropped, but apparently not. One 
frag left. Alright, well we get to do that all over again. So let's try this again. Alright, screw you. That was just BS, too. And, like, if you think this is bad, wait until we get to the final boss. You have taken the lead. It's like, and how is he taking so many hits, too? I feel like they've, they've buffed him with a greater amount of health. It almost feels like that, because the amount of hits I'm doing to him... ...would kill anyone else much faster. Like, that first time, he didn't even have armor. I think there are two sets of armor. Maybe that explains things. I thought there was only one set. Yeah, one of the spawns is right on top of armor. I think that explains things. But yeah, when I was playing this on Twitch, I literally did the camp strategy on my, my one successful completion of this level. I did the camp strategy and it works like a charm. We know, Wayne. That's like the tenth time someone's mentioned it. It's the big news today, apparently. God, man, I'm getting salty. So salty. <laughs> Alright, this is our last main tier. No, I don't need to do that, Aaron, actually. 
I'm not playing at like uh, like in a high level competition. I really don't care that much. So, but yes, if you're playing competitively, that is absolutely something you want to do. Oh, all right, Whew. let's keep going. Cadaver, bones, doom. Uh, no thanks, Raymond. I'm good. I really hate spawning down here, too, because there's absolutely nothing. So the amount of time it takes to get up to a weapon, like... Enemies have killed each other a bunch of times. Sometimes what's best to do when you're playing against the AI is just sit down in the bottom there. Or sit down in the middle area, sorry. It's a lot safer. You mentioned skeleton, dude, but why is no one no one noticed Doom? We finally get to fight Doom. They actually call him Doom in this, not Doom Guy. <laughs> Did you see those ridiculous railgun AI skills? The AI just whips around a corner, has like five pixels to, to see me and still hits me with it. Like, his view is so narrow, it was ridiculous. Excellent. Oh, dude, what? Okay, who hit me? This is where the AI really starts to learn how to get on your nerves. It's like, how do we piss the player off really badly? What is funny though is the AI would just like stop and start typing out of nowhere and so they'll just stop running for no reason. I mean I'm not I don't mind when it happens. That's a good rail shot. Bam! Yeah, so they've got a, a Doom guy here, uh, but they've also got a Doom chick.
Alright, so that platform up there is where quad damage appears. Oh, and the quad damage fell into the abyss. Yeah, I, I didn't, didn't mention earlier, but you can actually zoom in in this game as well. And I've got to bound to the uh, the right mouse button. You are tied for the lead. Oh no! Why did I do that? You are ah. tied for the lead. <laughs> that was four kills in a row with the quad damage railgun. That's not something that happens often. Damn, I'm on a roll with this railgun. rail from the other side. <laughs> Ugh. My ears itching. Oh, lucky shot. He must have had, like, no health for me to kill him with the shotgun at that range. Go. <laughs> Toggling aim hacks in single player.
Yeah, this, uh, that's actually a really good level. I like that one a lot. It's nice and open. But there's some good, like, subtle strategy to it with the, uh, the teleporters and whatnot. Lots of rail good railgun opportunities, too. Quad damage appears uh, in that room I just died in. Speaking of which... Dude, my whole body's like messing up now. My I've got something in my eyes now. Now my like my ears are itching. Really annoying. Oh, I lost the quad damage. That sucks. Lots of pits on this one, by the way. Last one. Oh, nice lucky shot. Come on. Went the wrong way. Trying to get the quad, everyone's going into the same room. Still ahead, but not by much. Alright, that was- that sucks. I hate it. It always sucks when you spawn and you get hit right away. You can't really do much about it.
Oh no, no. I fell off. We got it. All right, see ya, Aaron. Take care. Excellent. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. Yeah, I figured this game would be pretty nostalgic for some of you guys. I wasn't sure how many people would be interested in this, but Quake was a huge part of my upbringing in general. So it's one of those things. It's like, um, I kind of like Doom. I want to get to every, just about every Quake game that there is, almost. There, there are some I don't really care about that much, like Enemy Territory, Quake Wars, and and stuff like that. And I'm, you know, but Quake Three, even though it's just a multiplayer shooter, it is one I played a ton. So it's a game I obviously have wanted to cover eventually. Oh, nice. Yeah, this map is actually better than I was given it credit for when I was playing this on Twitch. You are tied for the lead. I was like, oh man, these platforms are dumb. But really, like, once you get the railgun and you figure out the flow of things, it's actually a pretty fun map. Oof. Crap, he got the armor. That's what I wanted. <laughs> Uh-oh. Should probably get back. <laughs> Sometimes that can happen. <laughs> you both you both boost at the same time and you hit each other in the air and you counter each other's momentum. It's funny when that happens. Am I a fan of any of the console versions? Um, yeah, I mean, I like both the Dreamcast and PS2 versions. But, I mean, admittedly, they're, they're kind of hard to play. The Dreamcast one less so because it's got keyboard and mouse support. Uh, there goes the quad. Yeah, we'll eventually stream the PS2 version. Uh, we'll, we'll probably stream the Dreamcast one eventually, but not anytime soon.
Oh no, I ran into the platform. gonna die yeah I knew I was gonna die I only had 5% health there was no way I was gonna get across that oh got him no scope no scoping is generally how I prefer to use the railgun in this game But it is undoubtedly useful to, to zoom in when you can. Like, when you're way across the map like this. And that's it. No, no aimbot. <laughs> I am actually moving the mouse and aiming manually. Alright, this is where things go downhill, because Zero here is uh, insanely difficult. His, uh, his AI is just stupid. So everything that we've experienced up to this point is like nothing compared to this. So this took me so many tries the other night. So he'll basically get the railgun, and you won't really be able to do much about it. I actually did not want to do that. We're gonna die. Yep. As long as your head is peeked out in the slightest, look at that. Let's restart. Fortunately, we can get him crushed. Hitting that little uh, platform or hitting that object in the sky will crush the box. The box is where the BFG is. Jesus Christ, man. And he keeps spawning on the same platform as me. Normally, he spawns on the other side. So the strategy is just to kind of wait, hope that he spawns on the same platform as you, like this. Or wait for him to come over to the same side as you. So that's exactly what we're going to do, we're going to wait here. It's honestly kind of a terrible way to end the game, to be honest with you. It's it's really, really annoying. It's it's beyond annoying. To have such an AI boost at the end doesn't make any sense to me. Because when the AI is as perfect as it is, you're no longer really playing the game. And he got the teleporter. Oh, 
Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, that's fine. Like, you've got to rely on luck. I don't like doing that. Oh, see, there we go. What the hell, man? Oh, dude, he fell off. So lucky. Look at that. He wasn't even facing me, and he still hit me. I shoot rail guns out of my ass. You are tied my name's lead. Zero. It's actually really funny when he does dumb things though and like falls off a platform on his own. I'm okay with that. I think he landed on uh, the platform above me. Where the hell are you? Getting good is merely a dream on this last level. What the f the second I peek out, I can't do anything. I get hit right away, and there goes 80% of my health. One frag left. Zero wins. <laughs> I thought I could have had it that time, but... There's some really, really bad moments. Zero. Zero. 
And if he gets the railgun immediately, man, you're toast. You have he has a tendency of spawning almost right on top of the railgun. And when that happens, it's like you can't do anything. <laughs> he killed himself by accident. Did you do it again? The armor's mine, sucker. Now he's got the BFG. Well, oh, this is this is nothing like those, Miku. This is just actually literally unfair to the extreme. Dude, I didn't even hear him go up the, uh, the boost, the jump pad. It's supposed to make a sound when they go up the jump pad, but he didn't make a sound. It's not high light. I uh, did a Let's Play of Highlight last year. It's on my channel. And we did a live stream of Faxanadu last year as well. Yeah, he's barely making any sounds when he's going up, uh, going off these boost pads. And it's kind of important that he does, because if he doesn't, then I, I can't tell he's on the same platform as me. Suck it. 
tied for the lead. You have lost the lead. Zero. What? You have taken the lead. I just hate how you basically have to cheese the AI. <laughs> How did you kill me in one hit? God, it's so annoying. I mean, I entirely expected it to be like this guy, so it's like, it's not like I'm surprised. I've already done this once this week, and it took us so many tries. And it took a run like this, where I was getting lucky, and he kept spawning on the same platform as me. Dude, you should have had no health. You are tied for the lead. Two frags left. And that's what I get for getting greedy. Yeah, he did it again. I didn't hear him on the boost pad. Zero wins. Yeah, that should have been the one too. I had a, a really good start, but I botched it by being dumb and getting greedy. You are tied for the lead. You have lost the lead. Zero. Zero. You have 
taking the lead. You are tied for the lead. He didn't even pick up the railgun. How did you shoot me with it? He, he, didn't, he hadn't even touched it yet. Zero. He's in the AI till you get like an easy free kill. Holy crap, dude. I don't understand why uh, I'm not hearing half of these boost pads. I hear some, but not all of them. And that's really screwing with me. I can't do this without being able to hear where he's going. It doesn't seem to matter where I look, either. I think one of the reasons is that I had uh, one of my ear cups off because it's easier to talk. So we'll see if that fixes the, uh, the sound issue on the boost pads. No, nope, not really. Um, the hell? Seriously? I mean, it's great that he's dying like that, but I'd rather get frags on him. Because all that does when he kills himself is just put him in the negative. He's gonna catch up. Yeah, it's pretty much guaranteed. Sorry guys, I can't freaking hear the uh, the teleporters. Yeah, I think some of the or I keep saying teleporters, but some of the boost pads just aren't making sounds. Even with the music turned down. Like, he, there we go, there's one. Ah! 
What cart are you talking about, JD? Ninja Bros. I mean, yeah, a lot of a lot of games have gone up in price. I mean, NES especially. NES has been going up for a long time, not just the last couple of years. But the really obscure carts that are half decent—not even half decent, to be honest with you—but the really crappy ones have gone up in price a lot. I mean, as the collector market grows, I mean, the value of pretty much everything goes up across the board. You are tied for the lead. <laughs> this is what happens when you die once. Dude, that was total BS. Zero. We had that one. That was the one. You have taken the lead. You are tied for what? the lead.
for the lead. Three frags left. Why do you need to buy it, JD? Just buy a flash card. If you're, gonna, if, if you're not even sure if you want it that much, just get a flash card. <laughs> Unless you're like hardcore collecting, man. He went back to the other side. He's like, nope, nope, not dealing with that. You have lost the lead. Zero. You have lost the lead. Zero. So one major tactic back in the day was jumping on top of these pillars. So basically you'd hit one of these boost pads, land on the pillars, and you'd jump from pillar to pillar, rocketing down like this. You have lost the lead. And it only works against the AI if he's using the rocket launcher. Zero. But if he's got the railgun first, he's using the railgun, that's it. He doesn't use the rocket launcher. I mean, that's cool, JD, but I mean, it's just something to keep in mind as these prices rise, you know? If you just want to play the games, but you want to do it on original hardware, it's a one-time investment. And then you can figure out if you want to drop the $60 on a game, you'll probably only play once again in the rest of your life. It's not entirely true. I know we all revisit games a lot, but it is something to keep in mind. 60 bucks and up for a loose cartridge. I can, you know, <laughs> it's a piece of plastic with a couple of chips on the inside of it. There's uh, a lot of other things you can put your money towards. That would probably be more useful. I mean, people are free to do whatever they want with their money, but... I... always try to persuade people to the dark side. not give in to the current collector market. The current collector market climate. Think of it like uh, using emulators, JD, 
where you can use ROMs. Except you house all your ROMs on a cart that actually goes into your NES, and you're playing those ROMs on original hardware. So it's the it's the. You are tied for the lead. It's the best balance between both worlds, between emulation and real hardware. You, have taken the lead. you get the benefits of having all the ROMs you want at your disposal combined with playing on your original hardware, on a CRT, or whatever your preferred display method is. So the games play and act just like they would if you had the real cartridge. Yeah, see for me, I was in, I was in game collecting when it was just in its infancy. 20 plus years ago. And it's just, it's sad to see, like, how far prices have gone since then. You have taken and on one hand, it's great that, you know, the popularity of classic games has gone up. That's fantastic. But people are, people are, you know, they're just eating this stuff up. And it's like, uh, I don't know, man. Yeah, it, I mean, exactly, JD. If you just want to play the games, then you can do that. And if you want to buy games because you want to have the real thing, that's fine. But I would consider trying before you buy. And not just buying everything you see just because you can. Because you end up losing a lot of money that way. And if you're a hardcore collector, that's, that's fine. But a lot of people I know are buying games, but they're not really collectors, you know? You have lost the lead. And that was Zero so close wins. again. Zero. It's like, if you're not really collecting, then like, think of other sources. Like, put your money towards better things. You have taken the lead. For the lead. Bang. You have lost the lead. Bang. Yeah, it sucks when he goes off that one boost platform that puts him on that, puts him where the BFG is. Because when he does that, he flies overhead and hits me with the railgun, guaranteed. Which is why this strategy doesn't work 100% of the time. You are tied for the lead. You have taken the lead. You are tied for the lead. And I keep getting greedy, because I think that when he dies like that... I can go ahead and like boost across and get whatever power up there is. You have lost the lead. Yep, he flew overhead. 
He flew overhead and railed me from the sky. Yeah, John Evan, it was a fun stream, man. It was, that was a good stream. A lot of people liked that because it was that that ROM act was ridiculously difficult at the end. One frag left. Oh my god, we did it! Oh! <laughs> it took us like... Oh, man. Well, with all the restarts, it was probably like 30 tries. I restarted a lot. Oh, man! Well, there you go, guys. Quake 3. Single player. Ugh. Thanks, Joseph. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. <laughs> that was probably like 45 minutes of the stream right there, maybe more. Uh, found what for a hundred dollars? A flash cart? Yeah, so, okay, um, here, let me, let me tell you the different places you can go. Um, probably what I would recommend is the, uh, the EverDrive N8. And if you're in the United States, I would probably buy it from Stone Age Gamer. Because the price is about the same as, as what it would cost from the source. Um... Yeah, I would get the EverDrive N8. I, I personally use what's called the Power Pack, which is by Retro USB. Um, it costs more money. It's not necessarily better. It was just, it was before the EverDrive N8. So, you know. Uh, it also takes compact flash cards instead of uh, SD cards. Um, but yeah, I would buy one from Stone Age Gamer. Uh, there are 122, it looks like. Um, yeah, and if you buy one on eBay, chances are you're going to get a fake. You're going to get a Chinese knockoff, and I don't recommend that. They might have compatibility issues. If you try to upgrade the firmware, you could brick it. Um, things like that. So I would buy from the original source. So a guy named Crix makes the EverDrives. And he sells them to a variety of distributors. You can buy them straight from Cricks, and it costs a little bit less. Not that much less, but it costs a little bit less. But it takes like a month to a month and a half to get it. So uh, unless he's doing his Black Friday sales, I recommend just going through like Stone Age Gamer. Because you'll get it in a couple of days after you order it. And then all you need to do is, I mean, there, are, there are in, should be instructions. You go to Cricks' website. Uh, you might have to load some system data to it. Um, you know, like, like some system software onto the SD card or system 
sorry, my brain is fried right now after playing through this damn game. Um, you might need to download some system files for it, but after that, it's just you download any ROM and you pop the cart into your system, turn it on, and then there you go. You got the ROM right in front of you, or the list of ROMs that you put on it. And uh, with NES games, you don't need a very big flash cart. Or sorry, you don't need a very big SD card, you know, because <laughs> NES ROMs are so small. Um, so you can get yourself a really cheap SD card, or it might be micro SD on the current models, I don't know. You have to read the descriptions, but that that'll allow you to play anything you want, just about. Um, you'll even that'll even open up Famicom games to you, or translations. You know, you can download translated ROMs or ROM translations, pop them on the flash card too. You can even play Famicom Disk System games off the flash card without having the disk system. Um, so yeah, they're. There are lots of other reasons to have a flash card. It's not just to minimize the amount you spend on collecting uh, and whatnot. But by having a flash card, you can try before you buy. And by doing that, you might save yourself some money in the long run. And if you just want to play a game, if you just want to play Little Samson, that's $800 or whatever. Because <laughs> you know you're probably never going to buy it unless you're a hardcore collector. Or it's your absolute favorite game of all time and you just absolutely have to have it. There you go. Uh, so you drop the 120 bucks on the flash card. You can play any $100 plus game on it that you want or any $5 plus game on it that you want. It doesn't matter. You can play any game you want. Hey, Bracey, man. What's going on, dude? How are you doing? We just finished. We, we literally just finished Quake 3. It took us about three and a half hours to get through the whole single player ordeal. Uh, what I can do for a, a few minutes here if you guys want is I can try one of the maps on Nightmare or something like that and see how that goes. I don't think it's going to go too well. Uh, let's see. Try Q3 DM6. But yeah, I mean, hopefully that works out for you, JD. I highly, highly recommend it. Highly recommend the flash cart route. I'm not saying, like, people should stop collecting and whatnot, but I do think that you should think about what you buy before you buy it. Like, do I really want to spend $60 and up for this, this one game? Do I really like the game that much? Like... So, like, a good balance is... Like, using a flash card to play everything you want. And then use that to figure out what you actually want to spend your money on. If you really have to have the original cards. Try zero on Nightmare? <laughs> I don't know if I want to go back to that fight, man. We were there for like an hour. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we just got annihilated by zero. Ridiculous, man. Yeah, look at that. Mid-air rocket hits. That's nightmare for you. Holy crap. You have lost the lead. Uh, Miku, I do plan on going to Twitch afterwards, but I'm gonna go get go get some food first. I need to do some NES practice. I need to record a Let's Play this weekend, so... I pretty much have to do that tonight. Or do the practice tonight. I'll probably record the video on Saturday. Hey, see you, John Evan. Take care. No, it's okay. 
No, don't worry about it, JD. I like explaining stuff like that. I mean, the game, we're, we're done with the game. I'm just kind of messing around at this point. I mean, we're not even gonna... I mean, Raymond says try the Zero fight again, but on Nightmare. <laughs> I feel like his AI was the Nightmare AI, though, so I wonder if it's gonna actually be any different than it was. Zero. Uh, maybe it is. <laughs> he just hit me a lot faster. Dude, where'd you- what? Oh, he, he went up top. Oh, all right. I give up, man. We're done. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> it's, it's so difficult, man. Uh, I I would. Uh, I'd love to see like a like the best Quake Three player out there play against the AI and see if it's something that they can handle. I don't. I, th I think even the best players are, you know, would get screwed over because the AI basically has perfect aim. Uh, is it that insane on the Dreamcast? I don't remember. I really don't remember Miko. I haven't gone through the the solo portion on Dreamcast since it came out. That was a long time ago. So, um, <laughs> later, kids. Too. No, we're just gonna we're gonna hang out and chat for a couple minutes, and then I'm probably gonna get out of here. Um, so yeah, I appreciate you guys hanging out. You saw the whole single player. And again, if you wanted to, you could, uh, you know, if I had an internet connection, I think I could still access the, the server list. Um, I could also specify a specific IP and port address or, or port if I was on the internet. You can also do, you can still do LAN games as well. So you can do local... Uh, not in player. Get space to stop. Internet. Uh, favorites. Local. Yeah, so you would just do a local game. Create the server. And then you could choose your different uh, game types. So there are uh, actually lots of other maps too. For uh, Capture the Flag and Team Deathmatch. So, and I think it should let me jump in without having uh, multiple teams. So the CTF maps in this game are uh, fairly balanced. Like both sides are almost, I believe, I believe pretty much identical. Uh, so let's see, I'll try to demonstrate it. There we go. Yeah, so you'll notice there's a blue side and then a red side. And the red side is identical to the blue side. So Capture the Flag is actually... I, I don't usually do CTF or Team Deathmatch when I play games like these, but I, I did actually play uh, these a lot in uh, Quake 3 back in the day. Although it doesn't... I don't think the flags have appeared because it's just me running around.
Yeah, I'm pretty sure the flag would appear probably right there, I'm guessing. Yeah, so let's go ahead and leave the arena. We'll do a new one. Uh, we'll do capture the flag again. CTF-1's a good map. And we do hurt me plenty. So now we should be in an actual... Actual CTF map. Yeah, this is this is a great map actually. We played this so much back in the day. Oh man, this brings back memories. You can jump through that window. So again, this is capture the flag. So the idea is to get the flag and bring it to your base, like that. Go, we just scored. So it looks like the maximum is eight. Eight captures. CTF can actually get pretty intense. Going, dude. <laughs> Get me the flag if you're gonna do that. This bot doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Come on, go on. You can do it. You. What are you doing? <laughs> that bot is an idiot. I don't think I can kill my own teammates. We're not playing online, Pablo. This I'm running this from an actual uh, old PC build. It, it has no internet connection. We're actually on Windows 98, and I'll show you guys the desktop once uh, once we end this. So I'm sure you're phenomenal, as you say. I don't really care that much, to be honest with you. <laughs> But, I couldn't play online even if I wanted to. Hey, hey, Velcro. But, we could maybe play some Quake Champion sometime. Mm -hmm. I missed that jump. UT, yeah. Unreal Tournament has crazy ragdoll in general. But 2K3 and 2K4 especially, man. <laughs> we'll, we'll probably come back and, and mess around with Unreal Tournament on a stream just like this. If you guys want to see that, let me know. I've got the Game of the Year edition on this PC. I would fire it up right now, but I do want to do some other things. I need to, like I said, I got to do some uh, LP practice. So, I'm going to get that done. And I need to try to get ahead, ahead of schedule because I'm, I've been doing these... You know, 
every Let's Play I've done in this last month and a half, it's been uh, at the last minute, and I don't like doing that. Give me my flag back. So, when you kill an opponent that has your flag, if you touch your flag, it warps back to your base. I don't think uh, people would be interested in watching me play Final Fantasy. I've thought about doing uh, some RPGs like that, but the games are way too long. Now, I've done long games here, like I've done Dark Souls and stuff like that recently, but I mean, I think that's at least interesting to watch because there's a lot going on. It's not the same battles over and over and over again. I mean, watching an RPG grind, honestly, to me, isn't that fun. There are Twitch streamers I follow that that occasionally do RPGs like that, and it's good background noise. That's about it. It's not. I don't really like actively watching them. The only time I'll actively watch a RPG is like a speedrun, but they're completely breaking the game in that regard. And that's just that's not how I would be playing on my. My YouTube stream. There are some RPGs we'll eventually do, but action RPGs I find are a lot better suited to the live stream. So we'll probably eventually do like Secret of Mana, you know. We'll do more action adventure games like Zelda. But classic turn-based JRPGs, they don't I don't think it's interesting to watch those. Crap, we're gonna die and lose the flag. Oh, we lost it. Yeah, we actually uh, started up a new game with Dragon Warrior on NES. AKA Dragon Quest. And, um. I think I probably grinded for like 10 plus hours and still have a long way to go. It was the most boring thing for people to watch. It's like, I'm not even gonna finish the game. We're not even gonna stream it on YouTube. It's just not worth it. Final Fantasy is similar. I mean, it's. it's I think Final Fantasy is much more streamlined. I personally think it's a much better game. I mean, it is newer, so it makes sense. But, um... Even that, there's a lot of grinding involved, unless you're speedrunning it. Come on, Grunt. Good job. <laughs> 